Oh, you bought me, yes, you bought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. You've been my doctor, you've been my lawyer, you've been my teacher, my friend indeed. Oh, you bought me, yes, you bought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you bought me, yes, you bought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you bought me, yes, you bought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. Every time I 
turn around, blessing, blessing. Every time I turn around, blessing on blessing. I say every time I turn around, blessing, blessing. Every time I turn around, blessing on blessing. The favor is rest upon me. In my hands, I have more.
church again we're on these very hallowed grounds good morning pastor first lady we welcome each and every one of you and of course our youtubers and zoomers welcome this morning so grateful that god has chosen to scatter tonight and bring us into this wonderful morning amen, amen. let's worship him in praise with brother Dwayne perry immediately Followed by our very own sister LaDonna Stanley Thompson. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house. The parking lot house. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still God's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all join in with us and help us uh, in this praise and worship. Presence. We 
with your power. Fill us with your power. Lord, live inside, of me. live inside of me. For you are that living water. You're the living water. That never drank fountain. Never drank fountain. Our comforter. Our counselor. Comforter and counselor. Lord, we want you to take complete control. Take complete control. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Lord, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Would you fill us with your power? Fill us with your power. And live inside of me. Live inside of me. Welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, Lord. We are Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Lord, live inside of me. Live inside of me. You are that living water. You're the living water. Oh, that never drying fountain. Never drying fountain. Our comforter. Our counselor. Comforter and counselor. Oh, please take complete control. Take complete control. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Lord, live inside of me. Live inside of me. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Lord, live inside of me. Live inside of me. We want you to fill us with your power, Lord. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Hallelujah. 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 Live inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live inside of me. To live inside of me, Lord. Live inside of me. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We're happy to be in your presence.
again, saints, I welcome you to Fort Washington Baptist Church uh, this morning. And I must say, it's so good to see Sister Candace. God bless you. We love you. You look very well. Amen. Again, I welcome each and every one of you to these Howard Grounds, to our YouTubers, our Zoomers. We welcome you this morning. And now that we ask you all to stand, as pastor come with our morning pastoral prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Most gracious God, our Father. With hearts overwhelmed with gratitude. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the privilege to be in this place at this time. To turn our hearts towards you. To seek your face. To sense your presence to glory in your name. Thank you for this privilege to lift you up, to proclaim from the depths of our souls that God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And his mercy is without end. Each morning, New mercies I see. Because of your grace, the blood is running warm in our veins one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Our eyes were able to see this morning, ears able to hear. Yes, Lord. Still had feeling in our fingertips and in our toes. Ooh, hallelujah. We got up this morning with the activity of our limbs. And when things came against us to say, stay home, there'll be another day. We pressed our way anyhow. And by your grace, we're communing with you and one another giving you glory, giving you praise, singing the songs of Zion together in corporate prayer, preparing our hearts to hear the word of God. Do a great work today, Lord Jesus, in some life, in some soul. Meet someone right where they are. Someone has a burden, someone has a weight to bear. Someone's going through something, some trial, some tribulation, but nothing that you did not know they would go through. You can handle it, Jesus. You can fix it. I ask that you do it right now in the name of Jesus. Let today be glorious for the people of God. Draw each of us closer to you. Deepen our faith. Strengthen our walk. Help us to be more like Jesus than we've ever been before. Assure someone today they're not alone. And no matter how difficult the trial, you're going to bring them through. We pray for healing for the sick among us and the sick who are in fellowshipping with us virtually and physically. Minister to everybody. Minister to broken relationships. Minister to finances. Minister to disappointment. Minister to sorrow and to sadness, to grief and to worry. Let them know that you're with them, Jesus. And if they hold on to your unchanging hand, a change will come. Hallelujah. 
We love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for mercy today, for kindness and for grace. Be glorified, magnified, and exalted through these broken vessels, these clay pots. When we leave this place, let everyone be glad they came. Let them walk a little bit lighter, refreshed, revived, restored, renewed, strengthened, encouraged, full of hope in the wonderful name of Jesus, who for our sins laid on the cross that we might have life. Be glorified today in Jesus' name. Let the believers say, Amen. Let's give God some praise Amen. in the parking lot. Let's give him some praise on Facebook. Let's give him some praise from our bedside, wherever you might be this morning. You take a moment right where you are. Turn your eyes toward heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. It could have been another way. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for not forgetting about me. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord. For every time you came through, thank you, Lord, for meeting my every need. We bless your name today. Amen and amen. I love you, saints. I'll talk with you in a little while. Good morning again, saints. We're going to ask you, you may be seated, and we're going to ask that you give a hand clap of praise as our dear sister Holy come. And minister us, followed by our very own Deacon Sister Shirley Jones. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my testimony this morning that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask yeah. or think yeah. Yeah. according to the power that works in us right. yeah. to the glory of God. Abundantly above all we can ask or think according to in you.
Sister Sherelle Jones Whitfield. Amen. Let's give her a hand, saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, in yeah. this parking lot, Amen. in my soul, in our hearts. You feel the spirit of the Lord? Yeah.
beloved pastor, Glory. an anointed one, yes. will come and deliver our morning, our morning, our afternoon, our evening, our all day long word. word. Amen? Amen. 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 Come, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Down in my feet. Hallelujah. In my soul. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Could we just have um, all of our vocalists, would you just come up here so we can give God some praise for you? All of our vocalists, just come up here. Let us see you real quick. All of our yeah, vocalists. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Let's give God some praise for them. Glory. Yeah, yeah. They've been ministering in the parking lot each week since we've been having service. Amen. 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 And they come out during the week, and we practice on Thursday nights out here in the parking lot. This past Thursday, we were out here um, practicing till the sun got tired and went out on us. And we were still out here in the evening practicing, getting ready for today. And I'm saying we were practicing. I was practicing with them, you know. Um, but because of them, we were able to have this kind of celebration Amen. in the parking lot. Amen. Let's give God some more praise Amen. for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for your faith and your faithfulness. Lord God, bless the word of God as it goes out today. I pray that every heart would be encouraged as I share from the scriptures. We love you, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise once more. Hallelujah. Whoa. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, people of God. Thank you for joining us in this parking lot one more time. For those who are joining virtually, thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast, whether you're on Facebook or on Zoom. Um, it's just a wonderful uh, time and occasion when we can get together um, to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Do ministry like Jesus. Do ministry like Jesus. That has been the subject of the past three messages. Do ministry like Jesus. Thus far, we've learned, say this with me, when we do ministry like Jesus, God is glorified. Are Hypocrites, are identified. Hypocrites are identified. Multitudes will be satisfied. Multitudes will be satisfied. And every demon will be horrified. And every demon will be horrified. That was the final statement that I made last week. And when I make that statement that every demon will be horrified, some of you may, in your mind, ask, is that true? When we do ministry like Jesus, will every demon literally be horrified? Or did I just use horrified because it flowed with satisfied, identified, and glorified. When you read the accounts of Jesus' encounters with demons, you'll see that demons feared Christ. Amen. In Luke 13, 10 through 16, where we were last week, let me just tell you, you don't have to turn, let me just tell you, where we were last week, a demon had been in a woman for 18 years with no plans of vacating her body. When Jesus showed up, that was the last day that demon occupied that woman's body. Amen. The demon had to get out. In Luke 4, 33 through 35, I'm telling, I'm not turning. In the synagogue, it reads, there was a man possessed by the spirit of of an unclean demon, Luke 4, 33 through 35. And this man possessed by the spirit cried out with a loud voice, 
leave us alone. What business do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in the midst of the people, it came out of him without doing him any harm. Amen. In Luke 4 and 41, and demons also were coming out of many, crying out and saying, you are the son of God, and rebuking them. He would not allow them to speak because they knew him to be the Christ. In Luke 8, 1 through 3, soon afterward, Jesus began going around from one city and village to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses. Yeah. Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons, had gone out. Yes. And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others who were contributing to their support out of their private means. In Luke 8, 26 through 33, then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, yeah. a man from the city met him who was possessed with demons. And he had not put on clothing for a long time. And he was not living in a house but among the tombs. And seeing Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What business do you have with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. For he had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had seized him many times. And he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard. And yet he would break the restraint to be driven by the demon into the desert. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion. That's like 5,000 demons because many demons had entered him and they were begging him not to command them to go away into the abyss. Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding there on the mountain and the demons begged him to permit them to enter the pigs and he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. In Luke 10, 17 through 20. Now the 72 who Jesus sent out to preach came back with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Yes. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions and authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Demons were horrified when Jesus showed up, and with those with the authority of Jesus showed up, they knew they would be cast out of any body they occupied. Jesus gave this authority to cast out demons to his apostles and disciples. When we do ministry like Jesus, God is glorified. Hypocrites are identified. Multitudes will be satisfied. And every demon from hell ought to be horrified when we do ministry under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, like our Lord and Savior, Lord. Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. 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 What else 
happens when we do ministry like the Lord Jesus. Father, open our eyes to see and ears to hear wonderful truth from your word. When we do ministry like Jesus, listen, really important today. People will learn what the few will do in order to be saved. When we do ministry like Jesus, people will learn what the few will do in order to be saved. In Luke 13, at verse 22, it reads this way. Luke 13 and 22 reads this way. Luke 13 and 22. And he was passing through from one city and village to another, teaching and proceeding on his way to Jerusalem. In verse 22, we observe the ministry of the Lord Jesus again. He was an itinerant teacher, preacher, moving from one city and village to another city and village, teaching and preaching as he was proceeding to Jerusalem. Whether he was in a synagogue, on a street corner, in a home or on a boat, Jesus was not shy about telling people about the kingdom of God Amen. Amen. so that those around him would know how to please God, would know the promises of God, and would know the plans of God. He did not want any to be ignorant of these things. Therefore, Jesus was intentional about teaching and preaching. Everyone who teaches the word of God knows that when you teach, there will always be someone with a question. And oftentimes, it's a question that many people have, but some won't ask. On this day, hearing Jesus teach, was someone brave enough to ask a question that many should have wondered about? At verse 23, it reads, and someone said to him while he was teaching, Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? Luke does not inform us of Jesus' lesson that day. However, based on the question, it's probable that Jesus was teaching on who would be saved. Hearing the lesson, on who would be saved. Someone asked Jesus in the middle of the study, Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? Luke does not mention this someone's name. It was not important. The question was, hearing the question, Jesus responded, not just to that someone, but to all who were present because his response Amen. Amen. Jesus responded not just to the someone who asked the question but to everyone who was present because Jesus' response should have been of concern to all of them. Everyone should want to know the answer to the question. Are there just a few who are being saved? Jesus answered and said this. He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. At verse 23, strive to enter through the narrow door. The verb agnizomai, agnizomai, 
translated strive is written not in the second person singular, you alone strive, a direct statement to the questioner, but rather it's written in the second person plural. You all strive. Every one of you strive. Jesus speaks to all of them. The verb is also written in the imperative mood. It's a New Testament command from the Lord Jesus. It's one of Jesus' commandments, not just to Jews, but to everyone. Every human being, I command you, strive to enter through the narrow door. If you want to be saved, there's only one way to do it. Strive, every one of you, to enter through the narrow door. Everyone must come in the same way. Everyone must do the same thing. Strive to enter through the narrow door. The question is, where is the narrow door? So that we can strive to enter through it. Is it in Jerusalem? Is it in the USA? Is it in California? Is it in England? Where is the narrow door? There are doors Amen. on this building. Amen. If you want to enter this building, you must go through the door. There's a door on my home. There's a door on yours. Right. If you want to enter into the home, you must go through the door. Where? What is the door? Every single person must go through in order to be saved. There is, brothers and sisters, only one door we can go through to be saved. Amen. And that door is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You must come through the door Hallelujah. in order to be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus said that Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. No one comes to the Father yep. but through me, yes. John 14 and 6. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture in John 10 and 9. Jesus, brothers and sisters, is the narrow door. Hallelujah. A door that's narrow, but wide enough oh, for God. any who want to be saved. Hallelujah. However, it's a narrow door. Ma it's narrow that you can only get in through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's a narrow door. Yeah. If your faith for being saved is in anything else apart from the finished work of Christ on the cross, Brothers and sisters, you won't get in. Yeah. It's a narrow door Man. where the only way you get in is through a narrow gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins and mine, rose from the dead, glory. ascended back to glory, glory, sits at the right hand of God, glory. and will come again. Yeah. It's a Man. narrow yeah. gospel. Man. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Yeah. It's the only door Hallelujah. that you can and be saved. It's faith alone and Christ alone by grace and mercy alone. It's a narrow door. Add to it, you won't get in. Take away from it, you won't get in. It's the only door. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. At Nizoma, from which we get the English word agony, Translated strive implies effort, agony, and energy, and work, and passion to get in that narrow door. Say, Pastor, does that mean Christians have a salvation based on works and not based on faith? Absolutely not. Then what does it mean, Agnizomai, that we've got to strive and use energy and work to get through that door? Jesus says strive for the narrow door. Because some people 
are striving to be saved through obeying the Ten Commandments, that's not the narrow door. Some are striving to be saved by being what they believe are nice people. That's not the narrow door. Some are striving to be spiritual apart from a biblical faith in Christ. I believe in God, I just don't believe the Bible. That's not the narrow door. You'll never be saved. Amen. Some are striving to be moral, to not lie, to not steal, to not be unkind, to be generous, to be philanthropist, to have their good outweigh their bad. That's not the narrow door. Yes. You'll never be saved. Amen. That striving cannot lead you to salvation. That's energy, that's passion, that's work, that's zeal that has no salvation in it and will not enable you to be saved. You'll be, you'll be evil enough to go to hell, but good enough to think you are saved. <laughs> Strive to enter through the narrow door. Take your zeal. Take your passion. Take all your energy and put it into living for Jesus Christ. Put all your energy, all your zeal, all your passion into believing that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Put all your energy, all your zeal, all your passion into believing that Jesus died on a cross for your sins so you can be spared death through his sacrifice. Put all your energy, all your zeal, all your passion into trusting Jesus Christ, into believing and obeying Jesus Christ, into submitting and bowing down to the command of Jesus Christ, the command to strive with everything that's in you to enter the narrow door. The best of me, the best of my energy, the best of my passion, the best of my zeal is to be given to the life and commitment of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord. Strive to enter the narrow door. Strive to be saved by coming in through the finished work of Christ on the cross. Strive to enter by believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Strive by surrendering your whole life to Jesus Christ, by obeying his commandment. Use your energy, your zeal, your passion to do the work of Jesus Christ, to believe and live in the will of Christ, and you will be saved through the narrow door. If you do not strive to enter the narrow door, you'll be good enough to deceive yourself, bad enough to bust hell wide open. I don't lie, I must be going to heaven. No, you going to hell. Without Jesus Christ, no one gets in. It's a narrow door. Add to it, you'll never be saved. Many, listen to this. And he said to them at verse 23, strive to enter through the narrow door. Look what he says. For many... I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Many will not be able. Many will not be saved. Many will seek to be saved when it's too late. They'll want to enter the narrow door when it's too late. late. Many will strive, agonize, labor hard to enter the doors in this world for things in this world. Many will strive, put all their energy into things that have nothing to do with Christ 
And when death comes, they'll stand at the door seeking to enter the narrow door and will not be able. It will be too late. They'll put all their energy into entering doors of lust, doors for wealth and health and prosperity, success and pleasure and fun and enjoyment and forget about the narrow door that one must go through in order to be saved. They'll forget about Jesus until they see Jesus at death, the one whom they must go through to enter salvation. They ignore him in this life, will see him in the afterlife and hope that he allows them in, but they will not be able because they did not strive for the narrow door when they had breath in their body. Amen. Amen. Many will seek to enter, but many won't strive to enter. They'll seek to enter at death, but never strive to enter when they had life. It will be too late. Only a few will strive to enter through the narrow door and be saved. Many will seek to enter after death and it will be too late. Will you be among the few who will strive to enter in this life or among the many who will seek to enter when there's no opportunity for life? When we do ministry like Jesus, people will learn that what the few will do in order to be saved. There's something else they'll learn. Listen, when we do ministry like Jesus, people will learn the reasons many will not be saved. What are the reasons that many will not be saved? Well, here's the first one. Many will not strive to enter the narrow door in this life, but will enter the, will try to seek the narrow door at death. It will be too late. Here's the second reason. Many will wait until the door to salvation has been closed and then try to enter the door. Amen. At verse number 24, it reads, Once the head of the house gets up and shuts the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open up to us the few who did strive to enter the narrow door, look at the text, won't be outside knocking when the door shuts. They won't have to knock to be let in. They won't have to say, Lord, open up for us. The few who strive to live for Jesus now will not be on the outside knocking to get in when death comes. But many will be outside the door knocking when it shuts. The few will be inside. And those will be the ones who obey Jesus Christ by striving to enter the narrow door when life was in their body. Yeah. The few yeah. will be led into the kingdom at death because they let Jesus into their hearts when they had life. They won't have to knock. The day is coming when the door to salvation will be shut for those who did not strive to enter the narrow door, one day it will be too late. Hallelujah. Another reason people will not be saved is because many will live without knowing Christ in life and will hear him say at death, I don't know you. Many will live in life not knowing Christ and at death will hear Christ say, I don't know you. Here's what Jesus will say. Then he will answer and say to you, I do not know where you are from. At verse 25, those on the inside knew Christ in this life and he knew them. They enjoyed a relationship with Christ in this life. Therefore, when they arrived at the door, the Lord welcomed them in. He walked with them in this life, talked with them in this life, and communed with them in this life. They worshiped him and bowed down to him in this life. They knew the Lord in this life intimately and he knew them they obeyed the lord in this life they enjoyed the lord in this life therefore when they showed up at the door at death they were welcomed into the new life in the kingdom those outside the door will knock on the door and say lord open up for us and the lord will answer them and say i do not know where you are from I never knew you. 
You and I had no relationship before you arrived at this door. I don't let strangers into my house. I don't know you. You can't come in here. You can't live in the kingdom because you didn't let me live in your heart when you had life. You're not my family. And on the outside the door, then you will begin to say at verse 26, we ate and we drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. Many standing outside the door to life will hear the Lord say to them, I don't know where you are from. You have no relationship with me. I never knew you before you came to this door. You came to church, but you never gave me your life. You were around me, but you never let me in your heart. Yes, you ate and you drank in my presence, but you never welcomed me into your presence. Amen. You are around me, but you never let me around you. Come on. You never gave me your heart. Yeah. You sang my songs, you heard my gospel, but you never one time put your trust in me. You never tried to strive to enter through the narrow door. You are around me, but you rejected me with your life. You never wanted to know me. Before you entered, death and stand now stand knocking at my door. You never wanted to spend time with me before when you had life. Now that you have death, I don't want to spend time with you. Amen. You never obeyed me when you had life. You never trusted in me. We never had a relationship. Before you came to this door, I don't know you. Depart from me, all you evildoers who would not obey me, who continue striving to do evil. I don't know you. If a stranger shows up at 2281 Community Drive and knocks on my door, when I answer, I say, what do you want? If he says, you know me, don't you pass the Fort Washington Baptist Church? You used to see me at events at the fort every now and then. Can I come in? And I'd look this person up and down and say, bro, I don't know you. Where do you come from? We don't have a relationship. Leave my house and my door will close. This will happen to many who did not strive to enter the narrow door in this life but will seek to enter the door in the life to come. They won't get in. Many will be told to part from the door that leads to life. Many will be called evildoers. Many will hear the words, I don't know where you are from. Don't be among the many who sat around where Jesus was and was never saved. You heard the gospel, but never embraced it. When you stand before the door to life on the last day, the Lord will say, who are you? Knocking on my door. Depart from me, you evil doer who would not obey my word. When we do ministry like Jesus, people will learn what will happen to the many who will not be saved and the few who will be. Jesus says, in that place outside the door, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth 
when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but yourselves being thrown out. Many will die to live outside the door of the kingdom. They'll die yeah, yeah. to live outside the door of the kingdom. They'll have feelings. How do you know they'll be weeping? They'll have emotions. How do you know? They'll be full of sorrow and regret. They'll have memories. How do you know? They'll remember the pillars of the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They'll remember the prophets and the words. They'll even remember mothers and fathers and daddies and friends testifying to them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll remember all of this outside yeah. the door. Yeah. Why they're weeping? Why they're gnashing their teeth? They will remember the prophets, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They'll remember the sermons they didn't want to hear when they had life. Because they had somewhere to go. They'll remember. They'll have sight. Outside the door. They'll see the Lord Jesus inside. And they'll see the believers that they would not believe inside. Yeah. They'll have sight. They'll yeah. have memory. They'll have feelings. Yeah. They'll have bodies that can be thrown out. Many in the afterlife will be weeping for the sins they would not repent of in this life. In the afterlife, you'll remember the lies you told that you wouldn't repent of. The immorality you engaged in that you would not stop. Many in the afterlife will be weeping. They'll be gnashing their teeth from the pain and anguish over their choice to strive for doors in this life, but not the door that leaves the life eternal. And then Jesus says, and they will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline, recline at the table in the kingdom. And behold, some who are last will be first, and some who are first will be last. Amen. The few who will be saved, who did strive to enter the narrow door, will come from every corner of this world, from the east and west and north and south. And they'll come from all over the world yeah. to enter the door and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. They'll commune with the Lord at the table in the kingdom of God. Those who came to know him in this life will enjoy him in the life to come. They'll commune with one another and the Lord at the table in the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters in the family of God of every race, male and female, communing with the Lord. They strove to enter by the narrow door. And some who were last to hear the gospel, the Gentiles, they will be first in the kingdom of God because of their faith and striving to enter the narrow door. And those who were first to hear the gospel will be last. Some of the Jews, they'll be outside the door with many weeping and gnashing of teeth because they did not strive to enter the narrow door. It will be loud and noisy outside the door with many weeping and gnashing of teeth. Millions of people weeping is going to be noisy outside the door. While inside the door is going to be noisy with worshiping and praising yeah. and glory in yeah. the presence of God. Yeah. There's going to be loud noises outside the door and loud inside the door. Some will be worshiping inside, the other will be weeping on the outside. Where will you be with the few inside worshiping or with the many outside weeping? Oh. You've got a choice to make. Do I want to weep or worship all eternity? Worship. Yes. 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 Where do I want to live when I leave here? I'm going to live somewhere. Yes. And his presence are outside the door. Yes. When you exhale the last time, if you had made your decision, it will be too late. When we do ministry like Jesus, people will learn what the few will do in order to be saved. They'll learn the reasons many will not be saved. And they will learn what will happen to the many who will not be saved and the few who will be saved. The many will be weeping. The few will be at the Lord's table worshiping.
Will you be among the many or the few? I've made my decision. Amen. 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 I'm going to be with you Amen. at the Lord's table. Go. So when I get there, I'm not going to have to knock. He's going to open the door. There goes my son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He'll recognize me. Yes. Like a family member that shows up at your house. They don't have to knock. They can come and the door's open. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go. Yes, sir. I pray you get to know him. Yes. So when you get there, you won't have to knock. The door will be open. Give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Most gracious God, our Father, few will strive to enter through the narrow door. Many will strive to enter the doors of this life and forget about the door that leads to life. And when we all exhale the last time, for some the door will be open, for others the door will be shut. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will be among the few who will enter life eternal. We don't know when we're leaving here. But for some, when they see that door, it will be too late. Let everyone today give his or her heart to Christ for real. And use their zeal and passion to strive to enter through the narrow door. By obeying Jesus and believing that gospel. We love you, we thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just say this with me. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe you lived, you died, you rose, and you ascended. I believe you lived. <laughs> And I believe you're coming back again. I believe you're coming back again. I believe through faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. We can have life eternal. We can have life eternal. Help each of us now. Help each of us now. To give our zeal and passion. Zeal and passion. To strive. To strive. To enter through the narrow door. So when we come to the door. We won't have to knock. It'll be open for us. Because he will know who we are. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Get to know Jesus for real. Live for him now. And on that last day, you won't have to knock. If you have to knock, it's too late. You won't get in. God bless you. I love you. Let somebody know you love him today. Oh. Amen. At this time, uh, we'll have Deacon Hines come uh, and do our offering. I think that's what's up. Is that accurate? Right that's correct. Right. Amen. Amen, Amen saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's a hard act to follow when the word is preached like that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you know what time it is? It's giving time. And we have multiple ways that we can give, uh, as we've said in past weeks, uh, through Givelify, through Fort Washington, uh, BaptistChurch.org, and you can mail it the uh, traditional way. We're going to have uh, Trustee Robert Williams to walk around. If you have any uh, gifts to give today, raise your hand so he will be able to come to you and uh, to be able to retrieve your offer. Uh, Saints, we've been really mightily, mightily blessed today. Amen? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Wonderful, sir. Wonderful.
Well, no, I thought uh, give the prayer. Uh, Pastor Williams will walk around and he will retrieve your offer. Amen? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you, Lord, for just caring for us, Lord. Lord, just for providing us the guidance and the wisdom to use the resources you have provided us. Lord, you've been faithful to us, and Lord, we, we want to be faithful not only to you, but to the saints and to the community. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to have what you've given us for our homes and our transportation, for our jobs, for our families. Lord, you have been so merciful. You've been, we're just grateful, Lord, for all that you do for us. And as we continue through the day, Lord, we ask you to keep your hand on us, to bless us. We've been mightily, mightily blessed today through word, through prayer, and through all of these things in the name of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to have a musical accompaniment from Deacon Michael Hammond. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My God, what an awesome sermon that was. Can you hear me? What an awesome sermon that was. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. This uh, song is, um, I Get Myself Away, it's my rendition, and it's by William McDowell. So please, uh, it's worship time, so sing along with me. Amen. Amen.
Thank you once again, Lord, for this day, for this opportunity, Lord, for us to come together. We thank you for the gifts that have been offered, Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us now and going forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Our announcements are as follows. Today's classes, all online, uh, Children's Church, ages 2 through 11, uh, will be at 11.25 this morning. Also, our building disciples class, men, women, young adults, will be held at 11.30. Uh, the women's ministry will be having their 2021 virtual weekend on August, Friday, August 13th as well as Saturday, August 14th. Our usual online equipping disciples Bible study will, uh, is suspended at the moment, but it will resume in September. The month of August is a time of rest and relaxation. So, <laughs> so, so uh, but we will resume in September, at which time we will return to the sanctuary. Okay? And so if you have not uh, yet pick up your annual report. You can do so with Trusty Elan to my right under the awning. And that concludes our announcements. Amen. Again, saints, we want to thank Pastor for a wonderful yeah. word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Make sure we strive, saints. Let us strive. Let us always strive to enter that one and only narrow door. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Thank you all so much for coming to our service today in the parking lot. Amen. It was glorious. Uh, the praise was just outstanding and wonderful. I pray the word blessed you. Uh, I was sharing with some of the saints this morning that the word cut me while I was preparing. It. And uh, that's supposed to happen. If the word does not convict me, before I preach it to you, then I must not be seeing it right. Because that word is a double-edged sword. It cuts the hearer and the one who is using it at the same time. None of us got it all right. But one thing we ought to have right is that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we're doing our best to live for Jesus. That we're striving to enter through that narrow door. We will fall short, no doubt about it. But we're striving to enter through the narrow door. Our faith for salvation is in Christ alone, by grace alone, and faith alone, and mercy alone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Won't you stand? Thank you to Deacon Hutchison, our AV guy. Amen. Who makes sure that you all can hear us. 
Amen. Thank you to our setup and breakdown crew who just come together and put everything out here and set everything up. Um, that's our virtual worship service team, a few deacons. Thank you to our um, security with Dr. Raymond Miller and uh, Brother Trustee Williams. Amen. We've been making sure every week the parking lot is set up and everybody know where they should park. Amen. And thank you to our account committee that shows up each week to make sure those love yeah. gifts that you give are properly allocated. And so we just thank God for all of the saints who've been working so hard. Thank you for Evangelist Ware who's been handling our Zoom to make sure folk who are on Zoom can get on. Praise the Lord. My bride has been handling Facebook. Amen. Um, Sister Rita's been our worship leader for all the services we've had here in the parking lot. And so, Sister Marita, so thank God for that woman of God. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. So, saints, once we give the benediction, um, I'm going to have all of us come forward and have uh, Sister Bellamy take a group picture of all of us to celebrate today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the precious privilege to commune with the saints one more time in this place. Thank you for the ministry of song, the ministry of word. We just pray, God, that our prayer, our praise, our preaching has done nothing but glorify you and brought saints closer to you. Again, our hope is that if any were lost before the service, they're saved now. And that each one of us would do our best to strive to enter through the narrow door. We definitely do not want to be the ones on the outside of the door knocking, but rather when you see us, we want the door to be opened and you welcoming us in, saying, I know you, you're one of mine. We love you, we praise you, we bless you. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Say what's the month of August. The month of August again, saints, all the services will be virtually, um, and we'll send out a link each week so you'll be able to log in. Amen. Right Amen. Let's give God some praise. Oh, right now, Amen. I said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, so, saints, right you can start moving forward so we can take a flip.